Um, so, yeah. So this panel, this experienced and awesome panel that I have the, the great opportunity to be working with, uh, with one of each of them. So that's why I dare to say they're, they're great professionals. Um, so we're gonna deep dive into the specifics, the specifics on governance regarding managing contracts and vendors. So for example, the, complex, the complexity that sometimes you can face on those kind of ecosystems. I know, Matt, you have something you can share with us in the sales perspective. How Avacent is really positioning this governance uh, matter? Yeah, so I'll, I'll give a little bit of background. First of all, maybe just take a couple minutes if you guys don't mind. <laughs> Many of you know us because we work with a lot of our clients. On the client side, we are the ones that are operating what you might refer to as a vendor management office, right? We're the ones operating the performance management metrics, approving the invoices, you know, doing the governance on the client's behalf. And we've invested a lot in that offering over the last four or five years. And over the last year and a half, um, the more data we've gotten into the system, the more we've started to reflect and think about how can we use this data to better partner with the service provider community and really create opportunities. And so what we'll talk about a little bit is what are we seeing from a sales perspective that's valuable both from our clients on the Avacense offering, on the governance offering, but also what are the meaningful ways that we're gonna help service providers actually you know, grow those clients and penetrate those clients further. So we'll talk a little bit about this concept of governance automation, which we've been working some time for the client side, but we'll introduce a couple new concepts around the value creation office, right? Or value creation engine is what we're calling it here. Um, but really, how do we generate new opportunities? How do we generate new business together while we're in these same clients over the course of the entire relationship? And how can we help you with the account growth and the expansion and the maturing of that client's environment over time? And so I'll talk a little bit about that. I live that, I breathe that every day. And we'll, we'll reflect a little bit on what's changing in the ecosystems and why we think that data is becoming more and more relevant for the service provider community. Um, so let me give you a little bit of a visual of it. Let's jump to the next slide if you can. So I've been presenting you know, most of this slide to some of you in the audience I recognize, but what's happened over the last um, sort of, let's call it the post-COVID environment is we've started to see a lot of consolidation. The last five or six large deal opportunities that we did involved you know, con cutting vendors down from a list of something like 30 to 40 all the way down to what maybe five or six. So massive consolidation. We're seeing that align along the lines of the hyperscalers. We're seeing the AI companies come in and play a role. And what we're seeing is some tendencies around closed ecosystems. Those of you who've been working on some of the recent large RPs that I've been working on, those are closed systems where the client for the next four or five years is only going to bid to the companies that they do work with who are integrated into that closed system. So a big trend that I think you're gonna start to see is post COVID it was everyone hire who's the best, get whoever can get me the best talent in those seats as quickly as possible. And that created that picture in the middle which was a lot of players and an inability to consolidate and to scale. So we think that next evolution really is this closed ecosystem. It's the consolidation of small players. And it could be anything from 100 staffing companies that are helping them in the US all the way to maybe they have five or six service integrators but no service integration strategy. So we're starting to see those close and we think that comes with a little bit of an opportunity. Um, number one, it is gonna increase the complexity. So those of you who've, who've stepped through any of those deliverables with us know they go very deep and they take a long time to, to build out. There's a lot of governance efforts in, in terms of oversight of these contracts because of what's been built into them. And you've probably seen there's a higher cost of sale. They take longer to work and they're very, very long sales cycles. So that being said, you know, with this changing ecosystem, our shift has sort of shifted as we talked about to how do we make data available to the service providers that will be valuable. And I'll finish here in like 30 seconds and then we'll, we'll turn it off. But I think no, it's important time, to understand time, this. Let's jump don't, to the next don't, slide. Don't, don't feel rushed. <laughs> <laughs> so most of you probably know we do engagement model structures on the left hand side, or pardon me, on the right hand side that are client focused, usually for about one, one and a half percent of the revenue. We administer all of the elements of that client's contract and it's really to make sure they get stability, to make sure their performance is realized, and to make sure they see transformation over the contract. What we've now started to see is this year, we're gonna be focusing on a lot of the value we can drive to the service provider community. How do we take that data that we govern within a closed ecosystem, and how do we convert that to opportunity? So that, that opportunity might be retaining your client, it might be creating new ideas to drive more value into that client, 
or it might be how do I grow this account and what are the pieces I'm missing to my puzzle in order to grow and scale this client further. So that's the focus on the governance side of the offering that's really been intense for us over the last couple of years. And we're really trying to productize that. So one last slide and we'll open this up. It's really three areas. If you're an account executive working a large portfolio and your question is how do I grow this account, we wanna figure out not only how to help you grow it, but how to help you retain it, how to help optimize, create new ideas, create new value offerings for that client, and then those are gonna manifest themselves in terms of real opportunities. So the left-hand side, think of that, we're being asked more and more to provide all of the areas of administration. How do we make your performance management easy? How do we make change orders seamless? How do we make sure clients don't ask you for $100 million of scope and don't sign a change order to pay you for it? So those are the areas we play. In the middle, we'll talk a lot about this concept of value creation. How do we identify new sourcing opportunities, opportunities they haven't penetrated enough, or consolidation opportunities together? And then how do we then take that, generate new opportunities, new work orders, and allow you guys to bid back on those work orders? And the platform that we're working on will we'll look to automate a lot of those things. So that, that's really our focus is in automation of the administration, but truly in mining new opportunities and helping grow these mutual client relationships together over the term. Yeah. So that, that's the sales focus for this year, and then the team mm -hmm. that's here with me are the ones who have to live with the stuff that exactly. I sell, so I think you guys know how that works on the <laughs> exactly. service provider and, community. And I think Mike can totally see that, that more in, into day to day, and you can share with us specifically what kind of uh, value and what do you see that Avacyn is really bringing to the table into those, into those aspects. Yeah, as Matt touched on, we, we provide, our team provides those supplier governance services. And uh, we've, we've really been more of a managed service, uh, but we're listening to all the feedback like you heard from Kevin this morning. And we're really looking at now with all the automation that we've been investing in, looking at it more as you know, software as a service and, and with the human touch to it. And so, uh, as Matt said, we, we provide the uh, contract management, the financial management, the performance management, the relationship management, and the risk management services to the vendor management organization. And through that data, that data capture, we have a lot of very rich data. And as we were talking earlier this morning about the, 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 uh, the panel on data, your data and our data together can really tell a great story around value, the value capture, the value creation that we can do within a client's account. So we look forward to working with you on that and seeing what we can do to really change that, that, uh, that value proposition, change that value message to our clients. Perfect. And from another perspective, or for a more kind of what is changing, what is new, what is evolving right now in, in the client's perspective, and also um, kind of more, more like a consultant side, Andre, what are your insights in this, in this matter? Yeah, look, I, I think what we're seeing in that, that, thank you for the question, what we're seeing in that is, is very much what do they want to bring the value creation office to bear on. So for example, some of our customers are doing it, you know, the ones who have big divestments on the go. Mm -hmm. you know, so even if we don't have the automation, even in a pre-automation state, mm -hmm. you know, we're bringing process and we're bringing talented people to create headroom. And in that headroom, then what we're doing with that is we're investing in the value creation engine. And so you see that happening with the, um, you know, with the divestments that we're doing for GE and for IFF. Um, in, in other situations, we might be going back and doing more, um, doing contract change endeavors. Going through and, for example, doing data protection and privacy was, was, was a big push. And also certain customers are looking to, to redo, for example, their cybersecurity environment or their, their network environment. So it's the kind of thing where with the headroom that we're creating, you put it into the value creation engine and then that's, that, that's what spins out. So, you know, so not only does the core function become less expensive, more efficient and run better, but then you have the headroom that you can put into value. Okay, good. So, and, and, and I throw this to anyone who wants to answer. Um, in your opinion, in your view, which are the biggest, or what is the biggest challenge that you are facing right now in delivering this kind of optimization or options to just be a little bit more efficient <coughs> in, in, in the delivery? And I know you have the complex one. Yeah, the suppliers <laughs> in the one. ecosystem. I mean, honestly, having 50 suppliers when you're trying to overlay tools, when you're trying to build an AI ops automation strategy, when you're trying to do that, makes it very, very impossible, uh, way, mm -hmm. way too fractured. So that, that's been our challenge, and that's why the theme of you know, sort of how do we consolidate, how do we create clean lines right, in the scope so that as we start to layer on some of these tools, some of these opportunities that we place in front of the client, that, that they're easy to pull the trigger on. Okay. And, and look, and I'll add on that, you know, we also see the clash of priorities. You know, different sponsors, different stakeholders within, within the customer. Yeah. You know, you've, some have a strong savings need, some have, you know, 
political drivers. Some have speed, speed to value, speed to market drivers. And so, yeah, reconciling those and keeping those balanced and making sure we're achieving for the customer, I think, is probably our greatest, our greatest issue right I'll now. I'll even add to it as I think out loud. Our number one challenge as deal advisors, right, is we want to make sure the deal doesn't end at the end of the transaction right. or at the, at the end exactly. of the implementation, right? We want to make sure that we have a small team of people in there that not only make sure that everything we posited up front in that thesis was realized, right, but, but also new opportunities, new things, additional transformation, additional opportunities are mined. And I don't need a massive team to do that. I need a team on the ground that's, that has their ear to the ground of two or three people that are constantly working with the client and reinforcing those initiatives and working with, let's call it hungry service providers looking to drive that kind of value. That's really the, the team we're looking to create in every client environment. And also I think it's important to build that kind of reputation, right? That you are delivering the service correctly with experience and you know what you're doing and that's why they are also trusting you to more work or more uh, potential kind of opportunities, right? So yeah, that's a good opportunity. And from a supplier governance, one of the challenges I see is you know, we come in to take over those transactions on behalf of the, uh, the vendor management uh, organization and many of those people were doing those transactions prior to us. So they're very comfortable at the transactional stage but what we're doing is we're freeing them up to go do the strategic activities and getting them to, to, to step up to those strategic activities sometimes is very difficult. I think as service providers, since you see vendor management offices across your entire slate of, of clients, helping them grow and mature and, and really move into that more strategic role, I think is a, is a, is a big challenge that we have with our clients. Right. And um, just to, to drive a little bit uh, further, or what in your experience is the expectation of the customer regarding governance in this specific area. Do you think it's sometimes too much that you need to tone it down a little bit and just set it to the ground? Or what is your experience in, on, on, on customer expectations regarding this matter? You know, they, they expect a lot. Uh, and we have a very robust uh, slate of services that we provide. So I, I think it's managing their expectations and then how we start to layer those services in and get everything operating. Um, you know, in many cases, you know, we're two years into contracts and we still don't have all the, the service level re, you know, requirements, the service level results uh, fully formed, fully developed and fully operational. And so managing those, those expectations that that is not going to necessarily be there right after transition on day one, but yet it shouldn't take two years. So balancing those, those expectations with what is reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone on the infrastructure side who's ever had to do a ServiceNow project that involved a significant amount of automation, there's a lot of work that, that's involved in that and a lot of details and a lot of requirements that have to be developed. And we, we face the same challenge. We're using ServiceNow to automate backend workflows on the governance side the same way as you would on the ITIL or IT service management side. So it's a very, very similar technical challenge. And I would hope all of you had a chance to visit our Avasense booth and see our, our Avasense solution. Um, We've invested a lot in it. Akshay and his team, the labs team, has done a great job developing that. Uh, we are now on the ServiceNow catalog in the store. Uh, and, uh, and in getting there, we had to be certified. And I think the feedback we received from the ServiceNow team is our scoped applications is one of the most complex and, and robust applications they have within the, the entire store within ServiceNow. So uh, it's, a, it's a great application. We are continuing to invest in, in developing that so that we can automate more and more of the processes. Yep, agree. If you have a chance, go and see it, please. <laughs> so, Andre, um, just to close it up a little bit, can you just summarize one of your intakes? Like, one of the things that you think, you think would be a great idea for our audience here to take back home? We can play with that a little bit. One of the questions that we got at the table, mm. you know, which you heard, was, yep. was sort of how do you connect, how do you connect, how do you attach to this? And we're kind of thinking there's, there's two easy use cases, right? One where, where, you, you, where you've got an incumbency, and you're looking to grow adjacent spaces. So if you are, let's say, for example, providing the technology for a, for a call center, you heard the AI story today, AI is going to be taking those seats very soon. So it's a good time to go and propose, hey, we'll, we'll take over your call center, 30%, 30% discount. We can help the client build the business case for that, benchmark the price, bring that in with a little value creation project, and in that way, prove our value to the customer and kind of work our way into the governance of it. But in that way, we can help your team grow. We can help you grow your footprint within your incumbency, which is really the most effective solution for the customer and the most effective for you guys from a cost perspective. Um, and the other one we're thinking about is where you have deals that because of governance or whatever are starting to run down on NPS, you're becoming less comfortable that you will get a renewal. Those are good ones to, to have us come in, do a little bit of a, of a recapture program with it, do a workshop with the client, 
help them understand what's possible, what it's going to take to put it back on the roads, and get you back to a renewal on that, where then we can help, run, we can help them run the governance on that and deliver what we, what we get them to, to look forward to and the expectations we set. Perfect. Thank you. Any closing thoughts, ideas? No, I think we all, we all struggle with the challenge of you start these client engagements and these clients expect transformation, right? And it's not always easy to pin that stuff down over time. And mm. so all of us, I think, are throwing um, everything in the kitchen sink at clients in terms of ideas. And, and the, the concept here is we have a team on the ground. We're going to be there. If you guys want to ideate with us, we want to do that jointly with you. We want to refine ideas, help you put them in front of a client and help build the business case to go do stuff. Like that's, that's what we want to do. You should think of us not as the people on the other end of your invoice hitting approval or checking the service level. Yeah. Uh, and certainly we do that and we make sure that the <coughs> client's operations run smooth, but it's really looking at all of the unmanaged areas and really sizing up those opportunities and speaking at a C-level executive um, you know, financial level that says here's what makes sense and here's what we can go do with these partners together. And I can't emphasize enough that the trend is definitely consolidation in closed ecosystems. And that means we're going to be, I won't be working with 15 companies on a client. I'm I'm going to be working with one or two of the same companies in the next few years and we need to establish the relationships to do that and let's go out and win some some business together and help drive some value back to these clients together that's the main area of focus from us yeah. nice and in this closed ecosystem that matt described you know we are we are helping monitor those service requests we're helping monitor the contract change requests we're there to make sure that you as a service provider are getting your fair share of, of that business in that closed ecosystem so i think we have a chance to really partner well on those opportunities as well perfect awesome okay. Okay, so um, if an idea comes to your mind and you can say, okay, let's, d let's try and, and make an efficient kind of solution today, what would that be? If, and can you, any one of you can share that kind of idea, like something revolutionary, what would you think you can apply right now? Well, I've got my really like, on the yeah, spot. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the call Revolution. center one I threw out. But you know, but but I think for that there's a lot of adjacencies, right? And it's it's watching where as we move to a more technology driven yeah, solution, exactly. as you go to adopt the technology solutions that give you that boost that Kevin was showing on on the graph, really it comes down to bringing technology into your customers. Yep. And you've got to drive that, you've got to lead that and run it. And you want to do it ahead of an RFP. You want to do it as a sole source, as a partner. Because if it goes to an RFP, you you've got an eight months, you know. Six to eight months in the market, it's going to go to somebody new. They're going to hire for that. They're going to build for it. They're going to be 24 months before they've got a new solution. Whereas you can bring something in, bring it in quickly, and solve it. So it's really getting ahead of it and taking that value for your teams, talking to your account execs about that, helping them think that through. It's easy to sit back and just collect, right? We typically talk about these guys as farmers, right? When you talk about minders, finder, finders, minders, and grinders, these are the minders. These are the people who are just minding these accounts. But they've got to find. And if they need help, that's why we're here. As I guess, as I mentioned earlier, I, you know, we have a very robust set of data from our vendor management activities, and I think combined with what you as a service provider bring to that account, we can combine that into a very powerful uh, mm -hmm. message for our clients. Awesome. Yeah, I think Andre's on to something too, that the, the more we talk about this tech-enabled services, that you know, there's fewer and fewer opportunities where the lines and the scope don't matter three years from now. So you know, if, if we're dealing with a company that's Azure focused, if we're dealing with a company that's all in on a co-pilot investment, mm. they're gonna wanna deal with partners who understand that architecture, who are evolving that architecture with them, and they're definitely going to be aligned to the same one or two partners as these strategies evolve. So I think that that's, that's gonna be a theme. I think most of us in this room, those of you who we work with regularly will find ourselves on the other end of calls talking at a much deeper level through some of these technologies and talking to a level that gets them to an implementable state. That's the hardest part is throw out a transformational idea. How do you actually commercially construct it? And I think we can be the ones to help you do some of this as some of these commercial models also help to evolve or start to evolve over time. Yep, I agree. And for example, talking about new technologies and, and now that everyone is talking about the disrupt the disruption of uh, artificial intelligence, copilot. Um, how do you see on the execution line um, resources are really accepting or really, or really using those kind of tools? Do you see that value added as of today? Or do you think it takes a little bit more time for them to just feel confident and, and, and use it a little bit more? How do you think? How do you see that? Well, I, I think from an individual employee standpoint, it takes a little time to feel confident and yeah. comfortable using it. Uh, certainly, we are pushing all of our employees to regularly use it. 
I think within our, our uh, Avasense tool, we are now starting to look at artificial intelligence, how we can bring that in, whether that's contract decomposition, contract, contract interpretations, uh, a number of different uh, uses for artificial intelligence within our environment and, and ecosystem as well. So we see that that's going to add a tremendous value to having this tech-enabled service that we provide uh, that is uh, less intensive on resources. Yeah, if you haven't seen the demo of Avasense, you will find that there's a, thousands of service levels we can manage, hundreds of different parameters. But from a usability perspective, most of the users who adopt it are like, wow, this is everything I've been waiting for. I, I was doing this with 400 spreadsheets on a, you know, a macro, right? So we get a lot of response there. The other side of it is, is Akshay and his team are working on this Avasant co-pilot, actually I won't speak too loud, but we're, we're working with concepts of how do we auto-generate a work order? How do we take an agile requirement from our stakeholders that they've mapped out the stories and then how can we script out that stuff directly with them? We have thousands of work orders to base that generative AI content off of. And so we're looking at a lot of ways to take this contract data and really make the transaction process automated from end to end. If a client has a requirement and it's clear, there's no reason why you in a closed ecosystem, we know rates, we know each other, shouldn't be able to, to transact that almost immediately. So if we could get down to a you know, 10 second transaction time for a work order, that would be amazing to us in the next five years. And if you think about the impact, think about the places where you have dozens or hundreds of, of SOWs that need a PO at the end of the year, and how you will often wait January and February not being able to invoice because your SOW hasn't been signed because you don't have a PO issued. It's, it's essentially eliminating that problem. Perfect. Okay, so I really appreciate your time. I thank you very much for, for sharing your ideas and your experience. And of course, we hope we can give the, the audience some new ideas, fresh ways to, to see how governance is applying right now in, in our environment. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.